Welcome back to Otaku No Video as always. Thank you very much for joining me for my review of a slightly unusual, very unusual little work of anime, and I'll explain why I'm quoting that in a minute, The Restaurant of Many Orders. And this has a couple of different titles. Uh, it's also known as, uh, I believe, A Well-Ordered Restaurant. Uh, depends on, on who you ask. Uh, this is a, only a 10 minute long animation, and it focuses on two British hunters who go out into the woods and have an experience. And that's all I'm going to say because I want to stay spoiler-free here. It's based on a story by Kenji Miyazawa. And Miyazawa has quite some connection to anime. There have been several different anime works either based on his stories or his life. Examples would include A Night on the Galactic Railroad and Spring in Chaos. And he's also frequently referenced in Japanese culture in general. Miyazawa writes stories that, that we would now probably call magical realism. Uh, he actually lived around the turn of the century, about 100 years ago. And his stories feel real, his poetry feels real, but there's always strange things happening in them. And that is what Restaurant of Many Orders, Restaurant of Many Orders feels like. Um, it's, it starts grounded, and then strange things happen. But what's important about Miyazawa is that his symbolism is always intentional. He's not just throwing weird imagery at you. He's giving you images and symbols that connect with the themes of his story, that connect, that connect with the characters and what he's trying to say about them. And that's very much true in Restaurant of, Restaurant of Many Orders is that you see things that you are supposed to think about. Like a lot of short films, like a lot of short artistic films, this is a film where you have to go in with your mind open and working. Right? This is not just sit back and relax and just let it wash over you. Although you can certainly do that. Um, to fully appreciate this film, there's... A fair amount to absorb. Now it's not hugely complicated, it's 10 minutes long, and while there are some strange images in it, you know, if you sit down and kind of plot out what's going on, it's pretty clear what the messages of the film are. You just gotta kind of sit down and think about it, right? It's not immediately obvious. So this is not a film a lot of people are gonna like. It's oddball in, in concept, and as you can see from the images I'm playing over here, it does not look like anime. It doesn't look anything like anime. In fact, I would argue it's not anime. It is Western-style animation. Uh, it's actually more like European-style animation, especially that from the uh, 70s and 80s in Europe, and especially Britain. And it's, it's, it seems to be very consciously copying the style of these kind of uh, chalkboard animations, these uh, watercolor animations that are being made a lot of in Britain at the time. In fact, it reminds me a lot of Watership J Down and the Plague Dogs and similar you know, British animated films of the, of the 80s. And that's one of the things I think is so interesting about this film. It's not... It, it has a specific visual style that was clearly deliberately chosen for the work. You know, it's not just, this is easy for me to draw, so I'm going to draw that. It's not that this is comfortable. This must have been really hard to draw. Nobody involved in this would have been, would have understood this style. You know, nobody in, involved spent years and years drawing in this style. So to see it drawn this way, it's really impressive. The director is uh, Tadunari Okamoto, who um, basically just did short subject films, uh, most of which were, uh, Almost all of them were just short films like this. He does not have to his name, you know, well-known 13-episode, 26-episode anime series. He just did these short films. And it's really interesting seeing something different from someone like this and seeing a story evolve over the course of time. Um, so, importantly, I think, um, Restaurant Nominating Orders is one of those things that you... You don't need to understand the dialogue. It's very much about the visuals. And it comes across very viscerally. This is a film 
where you're supposed to feel things. And it's really focused on provoking an emotional reaction through specific imagery and specific visual metaphor, right? Characters and animals and, and visual things will show up, but you're not necessarily meant to believe that that is precisely physically what's in front of that, that character right then. Um, a lot of these things are metaphors. So understand that, right? <laughs> Expect that. Anyway, um, as such, one of the nice things is you don't have to worry about, you know, dub versus sub. You don't have to worry about, like, do I believe these characters? This is a poem in visual form. And so check it out. I think you'll find it very interesting on those terms. Again, not something for your average, you know, Hollywood blockbuster explosion fest person. Um, but I think it's it's definitely this interesting little puzzle that is worth um, worth thinking about if you do watch it. It, it. It's worth approaching on its own as its own very distinctive little piece.